to get rid of. So we'd like to look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 this evening. And uh, we won't look at every detail of this, but we have some things, uh, look at some things that might be a help to us. Um, so I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 2 first. And I, I <clears throat> brethren, uh, when I came to you, I did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. My speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. However, we do speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but mm -hmm. which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Well, let's ask the Lord for help. Father, we do I come to you this evening realizing that, just as this text has said, we, we uh, receive things from you by your revelation to us, and uh, we thank you for those things that you have freely given to us. We pray that you would give us a greater understanding of the truths that are in this section for us this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I... Uh, I'm really uh, focusing on uh, the ministry of Paul in the, this uh, section and in the ministry of the of the Word of God. And Paul was saying that, uh, talking about uh, what that ministry was. And in the first verse, he talks about it being a, the testimony of God or the witness of God. And uh, Paul here speaks of the fact that there is a message which God has for us. And we, we want to see that um, Paul understood that it was the message which was important, not the man. And Paul gave and spoke the testimony of God and did that in the and when we think of testimony, we often think of courtrooms. And it wasn't a courtroom of law that he was doing this, but rather it was in the court of life. It was in the court of thoughts and ideas that uh, Paul had his opportunity to give witness to God and uh, to speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. <laughs> he spoke uh, 
eternal, unchanging, permanent truth, things that were always true. And some facets of what he spoke uh, had been previously kept a secret. It refers to that in verse seven, where it talks about the, uh, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, uh, hidden things, hidden wisdom of God, um, which God ordained before the ages for our glory. They're not new things in, a, in the sense that, uh, that God just thought of them, but they are uh, things which had never been heard nor known before, but they had just recently been revealed. And we know that the word of God has a progressive revelation so that things are, were uh, revealed in, in the word of God in a, uh, through time and more and more was revealed as time went on until the complete revelation when Jesus Christ came and, uh, and was the great uh, revelation. Now what Paul spoke about was Jesus Christ and him crucified, it says in verse two. His message was centered on Christ and it was centered on the cross. He focused on the person and the work of Christ. In uh, chapter one, verse 18, it speaks of the, of it, the message uh, of the cross. And uh, that's um, the focus of what Paul wanted to speak about. He didn't want to talk about a lot of things uh, and when he first came to the Corinthians, but he wanted to be sure that he centered on those things which were most essential and most uh, foundational for their faith. So he brought the message of God to them. It was the message, not the man. Paul's personal appearance or activity were not the point of what was going on. He did not focus on his own apostleship or his authority, though he could have, that was true. He did not focus on his uh, education or his intellect, though those were formidable. And, uh, but he spoke of the fact that he was there in weakness, fear, and much trembling. Um, here's a man who could have, but did not try to impress anyone. He simply spoke the message that God had given him to speak. And uh, it was a message of the wisdom of God and the power of God, as, uh, as he told about it in chapter one. Uh, and as we look at uh, Second Corinthians chapter four, and just a couple of verses there, you don't even need to turn to them, you're probably quite familiar with them. But in uh, Second Corinthians four, five through seven, it says, Paul says, we do not preach ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. These, there's so much there. We can't uh, really, it's, it's really overwhelming, but the, but the, Paul saw his ministry as uh, focusing and looking at the face of Jesus Christ and the glory of God. But we, that was what he carried to them. And he said, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. He's talking about himself. He's just a common vessel to carry the uh, excellent, the excellence of the uh, power, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us, of God, not of us, pointing to God and, uh, and away from himself. So it is uh, the message, it is not the messenger, uh, is the first point that uh, I wanted to get from what Paul said, the message, not to the messenger. And then uh, it says that he was uh, preaching 
in his speech and his in his preaching in verse four of chapter two, First Corinthians, we're back there now. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. And what he was, what his activities were, were uh, involved in in speaking and preaching and uh, a clear uh, proclamation of uh, the message from God. Uh, he does say that there are times when he uh, when uh, he speaks the uh, wisdom of uh, of God, and uh, he does speak wisdom. Uh, with mature people, uh, but not the wisdom of this world, not the wisdom uh, of, of uh, this age, not the wisdom of the rulers of this age. But uh, and here he sees himself in a capacity very similar to the heralds or the town criers of, of the ancient times who would have a message of importance from someone in authority. And uh, their job as a, as a town crier or the herald was to go through the town and verbally tell everybody that message so that would be distributed to all. It was a message that the, that the person in charge felt was important. And so it would, uh, all the herald had to do was to go and tell what it was. And that was what I think Paul saw as his responsibility. He had a message given to him that was committed to him from God, and he was to carry that message uh, to people. And it was interesting that he did it by uh, a clear and simple presentation of the facts and presentation of the message and not by persuasion. It says he does, didn't do it with persuasive words. There is a real danger with persuasion. Uh, men can be convinced by eloquent, high sounding words, skillful emotional manipulation, clever but deceptive arguments, philosophical confusion. There's lots of that out there. Uh, people can be convinced even by entertainment that really has no substance to it at all. Uh, but we know that there are some churches that, um, that center on that. Um, the, the danger then is that uh, men are not convinced by the truth of the message, nor are they convicted of sin nor are they converted to the Lord Jesus Christ as their savior. All of this is, a, is the work of God and the work of the Holy Spirit and uh, the, tr the truth of God's word reaching to the heart and the conscience of the hearer. God's spirit, I read somewhere, that God's spirit uses God's word to do God's work in God's man. Uh, it's not by human persuasion. Mm. Now, let, let me just clarify um, that it is, it is by proclamation, not by persuasion, but uh, we want to look for just a second over in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, where it speaks about the fact in, um, in verse 18, 2 Corinthians 5, 18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Now, in various versions, um, it uh, uses um, 
it uses words here of uh, to plead, to implore, to beg, to appeal, to beseech. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a message and a ministry. And it's based upon our own reconciliation to God. We, we have received from God uh, his forgiveness. And so then that is the message that we know is true for us and we have to get, tell the, the whole world. So we are in his ambassadors. We are to proclaim a clear, clear, understandable message and impress on the hearers the seriousness of their peril if they disregard that message mm -hmm. and invite them to receive the free gift of salvation mm -hmm. which we have received. So just some thoughts there then. So, so far we've said that, that it's the message, not the man. It is a proclamation, not persuasion. And I think then we need to also recognize that it's the revelation of God. These are things that have been revealed to us, uh, it says in verse 10, of, uh, back in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10, but God has revealed these things to us through his spirit. These things are uh, revealed from God. They are in the, in uh, verse 12, they are things freely given to us by God. Uh, they are things that perhaps are unseen or unheard of, unknown truths. I think here we can see that in verse 9. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. These are things that uh, we're, we're, we don't invent them ourselves. They are revealed by God. And they, it is the work of the Spirit in every step of the way to reveal these to us. And he reveals these to us. And yet it says here that these things are hidden from the rulers of this age. Um, and they would not have crucified the Lord of glory if they had understood these things. Indeed, it speaks in uh, toward the end of the chapter Verse 14, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. He doesn't uh, receive them, no matter how smart he is, mm -hmm. uh, because they are not things that are understood on purely intellectual level. Uh, they appear to be foolishness to him, and so he will not accept the truth. Uh, furthermore, it says that uh, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Um, he cannot understand spiritual truths, nor will he accept them um, until the spirit of God works in his heart to uh, give him understanding, to draw him to himself, to uh, reveal those truths to him. Um, now, the, it is the revelation of God, and it's by revelation, not by reason. And I want to be careful here, and I'll explain what I mean. But uh, this is not the wisdom of men. It's not human wisdom. It's not the wisdom of this world. It's not the wisdom of this age. It's not the philosophies of man. It is not the pseudosciences of men. Mm -hmm. The conclusions of men are based on their false premises. Uh, they arrive at them by the working of their fallible intelligence and by the process of a faulty hu human logic. Mm -hmm. And I want to be careful to say, when I say these are not, these things of God are not arrived at by human reason, because God is the inventor of logic and reasoned mm. thinking. The problem is that man uh, has incomplete and even wrong knowledge and incorrect, inadequate thinking ability. So neither can he know all things, nor even, even if he did know all things, he wouldn't know what to do with them. And so, um, 
that is man's problem. And so he cannot arrive at these truths of God by his reason, but by the revelation. And the revelation is from the, the word of God. So I've, uh, I see that my time really has run quickly, but I want to just go back and quickly review that here was a man with a message. The message was about Christ and about what happened at the cross. A common earthen vessel was this man carrying a marvelous treasure, the message. The message which he sought to clearly, accurately proclaim with no deception, no confusion, no manipulation, mm -hmm. but a message aimed straight at the heart and the conscience of man, of the hearer. And it's a revealed message, uh, a message unwrapped by the Spirit of God on display mm -hmm. in, uh, in the Word of God. And uh, it points to the Son of God. So let's just... Uh, Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the few things that we've been able to observe in this chapter and in these uh, few things that we've looked at. And we, we thank you that uh, there was a, such a tremendous example of a man yielded to you mm. and uh, you committed a message to him and he was able to put his own self aside and uh, deliver that message um, not with uh, not with eloquence, but just being clear and being plain and truthful. We thank you for that. Thank you that we have that very same message. The message has not changed since the days of Paul, and uh, that we uh, can see his method, and we ought to. Uh, uh, get ourselves out of the way and proclaim what the message that he has revealed to us for uh, the good of uh, others and for your glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Ray. Thanks for stepping up out in our, in our time of need. I know you got about three or four hours of warning before the <laughs> today. Thank you for stepping up, my brother. Really appreciate it.